let's make Filipino inspired afternoon tea. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh? I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to make afternoon tea at home, here's how you can do it. It is labor intensive, so either set aside a few days to prep or buy more of this stuff pre made. Oh, and another thing about this afternoon tea, it'll be Filipino inspired. The recipes will be on the website. First, finger sandwiches. After enjoying many afternoon tea experiences, I found that there's no hard rule on the sandwich fillings. I recommend making the fillings a few days ahead and then assemble the sandwiches right before serving so they don't get soggy. I'll make four different types today which is usually the amount I'd get served at an afternoon tea service. One popular sandwich I'd see would be chicken based, like coronation chicken. But here we're going with the national dish of the Philippines, Filipino chicken adobo. For the bread, I used my pandesal recipe which is a Filipino bread and baked it into a loaf. I recommend just buying the bread for this part to make it easier and cook the adobo a few days ahead of time to let the flavors sink in. You're probably familiar with cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches. An alternative can be cheese pimiento spread. My mom used to make this for us as an afternoon snack and I love the savory and sweet contrast. It's easy to make and a great addition to afternoon tea. Instead of smoked salmon, try this. I'm using a can of spicy Filipino sardines and tomato sauce. It's so good. It's not that spicy. When I was younger, this was such a treat when I get to eat it in the afternoons. Both my siblings said this was their favorite tea sandwich. Just saying. At almost every afternoon tea I've gone to, there was an egg sandwich in some form. We've got a Filipino salted egg and tomato dish where you literally just mix those two ingredients together. But here, instead of tomato, I used achara. It's pickled papaya and carrot with a sweet and sour flavor. It brightens up the saltiness of the egg. I still prefer it with tomato, but this one is fun to try if you happen to have a jar at home. The second phase of an afternoon tea experience is the scones, or scones, however you want to say it. I was gonna swap out the scones with a Filipino bread, but scones are my favorite part of afternoon tea and they have a unique texture and crumble to them, so we're keeping it. If you're gonna make scones from scratch, I recommend making these ahead of time. I keep them in the freezer until they're ready to bake, which takes about 20 to 25 minutes. Or you can bake them, stick them in the freezer, and heat them up for a few minutes when you're ready to serve, whichever one works for you. Now, when it comes to scone flavors, I typically get served one plain and the other usually has a dried fruit in it, like currants or raisins. I flavored mine with ube and white chocolate chips instead. We'll serve them with spreads later. Finally, we end with sweets. I've seen cakes and pastries of all sorts with the afternoon teas I've had. For this one, I decided to pick four Filipino treats that I've known growing up. Feel free to experiment with what you want to serve. All of the recipes here I made ahead of time. I'd make two per day and I stuck them in the fridge. I let them sit in room temperature an hour before serving. You could also reheat them in the microwave or oven for a few seconds, except for the coconut pudding one. This first one is a hybrid of Hawaiian haupia and Filipino maha blanca. It's a very simple five ingredient coconut pudding with corn. Initially, I wrapped it in edible paper to make it easier to pick up off the serving tray. It made it taste like the pudding had skin. It was not good. So I brought in a little tradition and slipped the coconut pudding atop a little slice of banana leaf. The next treat is another classic Filipino dessert. I'd usually find at least one cake during afternoon tea service, so here's a cake for ya. It's called cassava cake and has a nice chewy texture, kinda like you had butter mochi. It's not the standard western style cakes people may think of, but this stuff is delicious. Typically, cassava cake is plain or flavored with vanilla, but I wanted this one to have pandan flavor. It's baked twice if you want it with a custard topping, which I highly recommend. Otherwise, you can just top it with coconut cream curds or freshly grated coconut. Cassava cake is typically sliced into larger squares, but afternoon tea means I get to play with the shape. I top it with toasted pounded rice called pinipig, and you've got a bunch of Filipino flavors happening in this one serving. Sweet number three is another classic called kuchinta. It's brown sugar, all-purpose flour, tapioca starch, lye water. All these ingredients give you a bouncy treat with a texture between mochi and boba. It's typically in a round, flat cupcake shape, but since we're having fun with the afternoon tea, donuts. I absolutely have to top this with freshly grated coconut, which is how my grandma would always serve this for us. This is my childhood in the Philippines right here and is also my brother's favorite Filipino dessert. Well, is it dessert if I loved eating it for breakfast too? 
And finally, it's not Filipino afternoon tea without at least one rice-based dessert. There's a lot of rice-based desserts in the Philippines called kakanin, so I had Doug pick. He picked biko, which is a sticky rice and caramelized coconut milk. This recipe is simple, but it just takes patience and a lot of stirring before the coconut milk can cook down. Again, the recipes for all of these are in the blog if you want them. But if you've got a Filipino store or bakery nearby that makes these desserts pretty well, I would probably just buy them. I just prefer to make them myself to adjust the taste to what I like. Biko is typically sliced into bigger bar sizes, but this can be pretty filling and we've got all the other food that we made. It's also typically topped with the coconut cream curds, but that also takes another like 25 to 30 minutes to cook down. Instead, I try this with peanut butter. It's pretty good. And it takes like five seconds to swirl on. After we've sliced the sweets small enough to be desserts for ants, it's time to set up. Today's tea is the Royal Exchange Blend from Fortnum & Mason. Every afternoon tea spot I've gone to had at least 10 different teas and drinks to choose from. Some even more. I was planning to have two different teas, hot chocolate, and coffee, but my siblings had already been waiting for a couple hours. And at this point, I've logged so many hours of prep and cook time. So we stuck with one neutral tasting black tea. Here are the spreads for the scones. I typically see them served with butter or clotted cream, depending on where you're having it. Then it's accompanied with jam, marmalade, lemon curd, or a combination of those three. Just use what you've got. For serving, I've got a three-tier marble stand and a two-tier bone china stand. You could also use a cake stand or just plates, whatever you've got. Just put them on something. Give your guests their own teacups, tea strainers if needed, little plates and utensils, napkins, and you're ready to go. Stupendous. This is good. This is really good. Cooking oh. that. If you plan on making this at home, have fun with the menu and flavors. I shared what I typically saw in the multiple afternoon tea experiences that I've been in, but each one had its own uniqueness and personality. Typically, you'd eat sandwiches first, scones second, and dessert third, but this is your afternoon tea. So tell me, what would your menu look like if you hosted one of these at home? I'll be honest, for our next one, I'm so probably going to be adding in a lot more rice. We want rice. We want rice. We want rice.